Until now, we have explored the building blocks of large language models and generative AI. But there's a whole new world left to discover. In this video, we'll dive into the fascinating world of neural networks, the hidden power behind AI. We'll specifically focus on recurrent neural networks or RNNs, a specialized type with unique strengths and limitations. Finally, we'll unlock the secrets behind the exciting advancements in Gen AI, revealing what's driving its incredible evolution. So let's dive in and get started. Traditional algorithms often struggle with complex real-world data like images and language processing. Neural networks are a foundational concept in machine learning inspired by the structure and function of the human brain. You can think of a complex web of interconnected nodes, much like the human brain. Each node performs simple calculations and the connections between them determine how information flows through the network. This is the essence of neural network. At their core, Neural networks consist of interconnected nodes organized into layers. Input layers receive data, hidden layers process information, and output layers produce results. The strength of neural networks lies in their ability to learn from data, adjusting internal parameters or weights during training to optimize performance. They can learn integrate patterns from vast amounts of data, making them ideal for tasks like image recognition, such as identifying objects and pictures with impressive accuracy or machine translation, for example, seamlessly converting text from one language to another, or speech recognition, that is understanding spoken language and converting it into text. Think of it like this. You show a picture of a cat to a neural network, the network receives the image as input, processes it through hidden layers, and finally outputs its prediction, which could be a cat with high degree of confidence. The network may compare its output with the desired outcome or ground truth. And based on the error, the connections between the nodes are adjusted or weights are updated in a process called backpropagation. This process is repeated with multiple data points allowing the network to learn and improve its predictions over time. RNNs are built upon the basic principles of neural networks, but they add a crucial element, memory. This allows them to consider past information when making predictions, making them particularly adept at handling sequential data like language, speech, and time series. For example, predicting the next word in a sentence, translating languages, and even generating creative text formats. Or in speech, recognizing and understanding spoken language, which often relies on understanding the context of previous words. Or in case of time series, forecasting future trends in financial markets, stock prices, weather patterns, and other sequential data formats. Previous language models heavily made use of RNNs for generating text or prediction. So in that context, Generative AI is not really new. However, RNNs, while powerful for their time, were limited by the amount of compute and memory needed to perform well at generative tasks. Let's look at an example of RNN carrying out a simple next word prediction generative task. With just one previous word seen by the model, the prediction can't be very good. As you scale the RNN implementation to be able to see more of the preceding words in the text, you have to significantly scale the resources that the model uses. And as for the prediction, well, in this case, the model failed. Because even though you scale the model, it still hasn't seen enough of the input to make a good prediction. To successfully predict the next word, the model needs to see more than just the previous few words. Model needs to have an understanding of the whole sentence or even the whole document. Moreover, language is complex. In many languages, one word can have multiple meanings. These instances are known as homonyms. For example, in this sentence, it's only with the context of the entire sentence that we can see what spring really means. In addition to scaling and slowness issues, RNN suffered with another big problem of vanishing and exploding gradients. Understanding this problem clearly would also enable you to understand transformer architecture clearly. RNN typically map one sequence of input data, for example, a words in sequence, to another sequence of output data, example, a translated sentence. In this case, our input is X and we want a sequence of Y. So we gave our RNN the first item as input. So X1 along with an initial state, usually made up of only zeros. The RNN produces an output Y1. We then take the hidden state of the network of the previous time step along with the next input token, so X2. And the network had to produce the second output token Y2 and then we do the same at the third time step in which we took the hidden state of the previous time step 
along with the input token at the time step 3 at the network produces output token y3 so if you enter n tokens you need n time steps to map sequences and this worked fine for a lot of tasks but introduced the problem of vanishing and exploding gradients now training any neural network involves adjusting the connections or weights between the neurons in each layer these weights are like knobs you turn to adjust the neural network's behavior. And to learn, the neural network uses an algorithm called backpropagation to calculate how much to adjust each weight based on the difference between its prediction and the actual answer, which is also called the error. Think of the gradients as signals telling the neural network how much to adjust each weight. In vanishing gradients, these signals become progressively smaller as they travel backward through the network from output to input layers during backpropagation. Exploding gradients is the opposite situation. Here, the gradient signal becomes progressively larger as they travel backward. This problem of vanishing and exploding gradients can be better explained using the chain rule. The chain rule is a fundamental concept of calculus, a branch of mathematics focused on understanding rates of change. It tells us how to find the derivative of a composite function, which is a function where the output of one function becomes the input for another. In simpler terms, imagine you have a chain of events where one thing affects another and that second thing affects a third. The chain rule helps you to figure out how a change in the first thing ultimately affects the third even though they are not directly connected. In the case of our RNN, they are designed to handle chain or sequential data. Let's imagine we have two functions f of x, y and g of z. So we have our first function f of x, y taking inputs x and y and let's say it multiplies these two numbers, meaning x is multiplied by y and the result, let's call it z. And this result is given to function g of z. And say g of z is equal to z cube. Now g of z depends upon the output of f of x comma y. Using chain rule, we can find the derivative of g with respect to x. Let's say it is equal to the derivative of g with respect to f and multiplied by the derivative of f with respect to x. These two should kind of cancel out and this is called the chain rule. Imagine this number is 0.3 and this number is 0.2. The resulting numbers when multiplied together is a number that is smaller than the two initial numbers. Because if you have two numbers that are smaller than one and if we multiply them together, they will produce an even smaller number. And if you have two numbers that are bigger than one and we multiply them together, they will produce a number that is bigger than both of them. So here we have two because the distance from this node is two. But imagine you have hundreds or thousands of nodes. So if we have a very long chain of computation, it eventually will either become a very big number or a very small number. And this is not desirable first of all because our CPU or GPU can only represent numbers up to a certain precision, usually 32 or 64 bit. This means that the gradient is vanishing or in the other case, it can explode into a very big number. The next problem in RNN is difficulty in accessing information from a long time ago. To understand this, it's important to conceptualize the RNN as a lengthy computational graph. When the initial token is fed into the recurrent neural network alongside the initial state, it generates a new hidden state, which is then employed with the subsequent token to generate the subsequent output. Imagine you have a long story with many sentences, and RNN, like a forgetful friend, struggles to remember details from the beginning as it reads further because RNNs process information sequentially. They read one word at a time, updating their memory or hidden state with each word. It can result in long chains of calculations. This memory update involves multiplying numbers repeatedly and information can get distorted over time. By the time RNN reaches the end, the influence of the first word is almost forgotten. However, in 2017, everything changed with the transformer architecture. Following the release of the paper, attention is all you need by Google at the University of Toronto, a significant shift occurred. The introduction of the transformer architecture marked a pivotal moment. This innovative approach catalyzed advancements in generative AI evident today. Notably, it demonstrates efficient scalability with multi-core GPUs, parallel processing capabilities for input data, enabling utilization of extensive training datasets. Most importantly, it possesses the ability to discern the significance of processed words through learned attention mechanism and get the full context. Think of the transformer as a friend who takes notes and connects ideas across the entire story. It doesn't rely on a single chain of calculations. 
allowing it to access and consider information from any part of the story when making sense of the current world. This is why transformers excel at tasks like machine translations and text summarizations, where understanding the full context is crucial. Remember, RNNs are great for shorter sequences, while transformers shine when dealing with long-range dependencies and complex relationships in large amounts of text. In the upcoming video, we'll delve deeper into the groundbreaking transformer architecture, exploring how its efficient utilization of multi-core GPUs accelerated progress in generative AI. So, stay connected.